So Tesla had this event where allegedly they showed off a fully autonomous cyber cab, a Robovin and robots with human assisted intelligence. One small detail was the claim that the cyber cab would wirelessly charge, thus making it more self-sufficient. So like everything Tesla does, fanboys and fangirls proclaim this as a revolution. Haters said it's just vaporware. I'm here to tell you, this is the most realistic thing to come out of that event. It's easier to do than unsupervised full self-driving. A light version of it will probably be available sooner than you think. And yet it's nothing that others haven't already done. Let's talk about Tesla's wireless charging product. Physicist Michael Faraday, as in Faraday Future, pioneered the use of electromagnetic fields to transmit energy between two coils. Later, Nikola Tesla, as in Nikola and Tesla, worked on transmitting electricity through the air between a transmitter and a receiver. Now, of course, we have wireless charging of our phones. The charging pad has an induction coil that creates an oscillating electromagnetic field. The receiver on the phone collects that magnetic field and converts it back into a current flow to recharge the battery. GM's EV1, remember that? The vehicle used a charging puck called MagnaCharge. That would be absolutely a great name for Tesla's wireless charging, but I guess the name's taken. That used inductive charging to charge the EV1, but it was given up for a drawback that I'll talk about shortly. Wireless EV charging is quite mature today. SAE has a standard J2954 that outlines how energy is transmitted. ISO 15118-20 covers the communication to manage a wireless charging session. Other standards exist around the world. This can all be done today. So why hasn't it? The benefit of wireless charging is convenience so that lazy humans don't forget to plug in and autonomous vehicles someday don't have to rely on a human or a robotic arm to recharge. The drawbacks of wireless charging are many. Inefficiency, charging speed, cost, weight, centering of the vehicle, and EMI. If we compare a level two home charger to a wireless charger, both of them operating, let's say seven to 11 kilowatts, you can see that a wireless charging system has a pad to transmit the power and a receiver on the vehicle connected to the battery management system. In teardowns of Tesla Cybertruck, they have a connection designed into that truck for a wireless charging receiver. That's the most likely scenario discussed where you buy an EV, you tell them you want the wireless charging option and you pay to have a receiver installed in your EV because your OEM designed the vehicle to package it. Both the receiver and a pad add cost and it adds weight on the vehicle side. There's a penalty for the weight of that coil receiver. Neither of the reasons are a deal breaker, but it needs to be taken into account when you're looking at the cost versus the benefit. Centering is more of a formality. Some systems use light on the wall box to guide you into position over the transmitter. A better solution would be to integrate that into the vehicle display, or once you actually make an autonomous vehicle, it does it by itself. Neo, for example, has their vehicles automatically guided into the battery swap station today so that they are in the right position for that operation. Vehicles with higher ground clearance will need to squat down. Wireless charging in the 11 kilowatt range has been tested at a distance of up to 10 inches, but closer is better. Five inches or so is kind of the sweet spot. The receiver on the EV or the pad could move up and down too. Stellantis worked with the company EFI Automotive on a charging concept where the pad moves to get centered and at the right height for the vehicle. Tesla's video, though, only shows a stationary pad. Electromagnetic interference is another potential hurdle. Electric vehicles have already been chastised for wanting to drop AM radio due to interference issues. Lobbyists are trying to make them keep it, which requires better shielding and EMI filtering. Wireless charging is at its core generating EMI, so questions have been raised about the EMI testing requirements for wireless charging to make sure it doesn't interfere with other wireless signals. Efficiency is the real cost of wireless charging, or is it? I've already used some clips from Ytricity. They're a leader in America for developing wireless charging by their own measures. 
There's a 10% efficiency loss with wireless charging. That leads many in the industry to pronounce wireless charging dead. Lower efficiency means more demand from the grid and higher costs. But proponents of wireless charging point out correctly that level two charging is not 100% efficient either. In particular, the onboard charger takes the incoming AC electricity and converts it to DC electricity for the battery, and there's an efficiency loss there. Real-world evaluations of today's level two charging shows about a 10% efficiency loss. This leads proponents to claim that they're as efficient as plugging in, so problem solved. But there's a problem with this. EV makers and suppliers are working to improve the efficiency of that onboard charger, switching to things like silicon carbide and other improvements. I did a video with AmpX Technology who claim an efficiency of 97%. So current level two plug-in charging will get more efficient. It's kind of a moving target. We also know that wireless charging gets less efficient when the receiver is misaligned over the pad or if the pad is covered by things like, you know, snow and debris. I believe that wireless charging will always be a little less efficient than plugging in. Wireless EV charging would be convenient at destinations, your home, in a parking lot, on street parking, or maybe at fleet depots. The Tesla video shows it going up to 25 kilowatts. That's at the upper limit of what other companies are demonstrating today, but nothing game changing. So if Tesla can't go any faster than that, it must be impossible. Wrong. Oak Ridge National Laboratories recently demonstrated 270 kilowatt charging, breaking its own previous record. They did this in partnership with a Volkswagen Group of America. They demonstrated it on a Porsche Taycan. Now, how efficient is wireless fast charging? How expensive is the hardware? And will the EMI issues cause problems? All this needs to be tested further and tried out. Electron is a company testing a wireless charging road. Personally, I think the cost of adding millions of transmitters in the road will outweigh the benefits in America. I mean, we barely have enough money to fix the potholes. A more realistic application is opportunity charging. Let's say at a bus stop, each drop off or a delivery van at the warehouse dock can get a small boost while they're stopped. But for these scenarios, there are already plug-in solutions available. Personally, I find the whole thing lazy, and even a small efficiency penalty is just unacceptable. But someone is going to offer wireless charging as an add-on option, so why not Tesla? Level 2 charging could definitely be made ready by 2027. Fast charging by then? Mm, I'm not so sure. I could easily see them launching the slow charging receiver with the promise that someday it will also fast charge too. And you can add that to the long list of promises from Tesla. We have to assume that Tesla will build out this massive network of charging pads. That won't be cheap. And in snowy regions, they're going to need to be kept clean. But I give this version of wireless charging a much better chance of happening than the Robovin or of Optimus plugging in your Tesla for you. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching.